А, так, після цієї чудової лекції ми продовжуємо тематику машинного навчання. А, і the work title is a challenging test for DFTB semi-empirical quantum chemical methods built with AI, and the authors are Terz Andrii, it's me, and Nikolenko Timofi. Uh, the computer modeling of molecular is important for many fields, including chemical properties, modeling of chemical reactions, and the search uh, and development of pharmaceuticals. And there are various modeling methods available, and some of them uh, offer accuracy comparable to experimental techniques, and while others prioritize speed. And often there is a need for methods that are both accurate and fast, and that lead community uh, to an interest in semi-empirical methods. And in addition to that, machine learning methods with their relatively low computational costs find application in molecular modeling beyond prediction tasks. Uh, uh, they can predict certain molecular properties based on the structural formulas. And these properties may include a biological activity or even the error of other methods. Uh, therefore, the aim of our study was to investigate whether ML methods can be utilized to identify molecules for each uh, conventional semi-empirical methods uh, produce the poorest results. Uh, and as a set of such molecules would be well available for determining the applicability limits of the semi-empirical method uh, and identifying shortcomings in its physical model based on specific examples of molecules that are most challenging for uh, the semi this semi-empirical method. Um, and more specifically, we focused on the case then the semi-empirical method is employed to compute uh, relative energies of uh, differences between the conformers of the molecule. Um, as we know, the spatial structure and properties of biomolecules depend on the their conformation. And for instance, then interpreting the vibrational spectra in the gas phase, the probability of the conformational uh, realization is determined by its relative energy. And in the search of molecular conform conformers and the de determination of their relative energies, the semi-empirical method uh, GFN1XTB stands out uh, because it's a key component of the power powerful uh, modern metadynamic method. And in turn, GFN1XTB is a representative of the methods based on the physically motivated tight binded approximation model cal called a DFTB. Uh, in this study, we constructed a ML model that could quickly identify in a large data set of molecular structures those molecules for which the GFN1XTB semi-empirical method yields re relative uh, conformational energies with the largest errors. Uh, and we introduced a metric called delta presented on the slide as a quantitative measure of the difference between the relative conformational energies obtained uh, with the semi-empirical uh, method and the references energies uh, com computed with a quantum uh, mechanical first principle description of the molecular electronic structure. Uh, specifically, the reference energies were derived from the PBH3C method from the DFT family. Uh, for creating machine learning models, a large volume data is required. Typically, it is composed of the multiple examples of the molecular structures, and known values pairs. Uh, for the data preparation process, we started from the PC9 dataset and set approximately 7,000 biomolecules containing seven atoms of uh, HCNO. And the, using the correct program, we found conformers for all these molecules and then computed the relative energies uh, of these conformers with GFN1XTB. Uh, next, we used PBH3C method uh, to partially optimize the geometries and then to find their relative energies. And from this data, we uh, derived the values of delta metric, uh, which is our primary focus. Uh, then we used two approach to build our ML models. One of them uh, based on the solely on structural formula of the molecule and the second solely on the molecular properties. Uh, the molecular structure can be represented as a graph. Uh, and in the first approach, we used neural networks that can operate on graphs. Uh, it was a mesh, uh, message passing neural network and graph convolutional neural network. Uh, in the second approach, we used uh, the 
gradient boosting decision tree algorithm. For this model, the molecule was uh, characterized by molecular descriptors related to specific physiochemical properties. So we trained and test all three models as well as all possible combination of these models. And from the results shown in table one, it is evident that the uh, ensemble of three models uh, uh, achieves the highest accuracy in metric determination and also generalization capability when it comes to the molecules with different number of atoms. And in fig uh, figure six, we show a graph assessing uh, the correlation between predicted and true values of target metric delta. Uh, next, we assessed our model by taking two sets of equal size. Uh, one randomly selected, it's blue, and one uh, other consisted of the most challenging uh, molecules uh, based on the model's prediction, predictions, it's red. Uh, we see the molecules se selected using the model, the average value of metric is significantly higher than the, for the randomly chosen one. Uh, this indicates that the model is indeed capable of identifying the difficult molecules. Uh, and unlike neural networks, the model based on the uh, random forest algorithm allows to determine which features the model consider uh, the most important. Uh, for the gradient boosting model on our data set, the most informative uh, features for the delta uh, were uh, found to be number of hydrogen bond donors, amount of NH or OH groups, and number of rotational bonds. Uh, from the researcher perspective, it is beneficial that these uh, uh, specific uh, features were identified as significant. Um, and, but however, based on the tables, uh, we can see that uh, gradient boosting model alone provides a lower ac accuracy uh, and less generalization uh, uh, compared to the model based on the neural networks, uh, which considers the molecular structure formula as a graph. Uh, uh, hence, the, these neural networks are more promising for using this task. And in figure 9, we see 20 most challenging molecules for the semi-empirical method based on the true metric. The molecules with green background were classified by our ML model as being difficult, uh, while only with red background were misclassified. Uh, and in figure 10, we can see distribution of predicted metric when applied model to 75,000 uh, molecules from the KMBL dataset. Uh, so let us now summarize some of the key observations which we have made in this work. We were able to successfully use ML to identify molecules where they are difficult for the GFN1XTB semi-empirical method. This was achieved through the creation of two types of graph neural networks and the uh, gradient boosting method. Uh, the ensemble of three models exhibits uh, better generalization ability and higher accuracy, as expected and confirmed in our case. And the accuracy of the classification for an ensemble of models is uh, 80%. Uh, out of 75,000 uh, molecules from the KMBL molecular data set, our ensemble of models identified uh, 105028 uh, as XTB challenging. So we recommend them for further testing and improvement of the physical model of GFN1XTB method. And the found set of molecules is available at this QR code. Uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, I'd like to answer some questions. Thank you. Uh, uh, please, questions. Thank you very much for your question, for your uh, presentation. Uh, it's very interesting. And I just wanted to ask you about the calculation of the energies that you used in your metric. You calculated the difference between uh, energies. Uh, in this metric, in, in delta, it was uh, the formula at the very beginning. And uh, uh, after that, you use uh, 75,000 uh, uh, molecules you tested. So uh, you had a, a very big uh, a set of these uh, molecules. Uh, did you calculate uh, the energies uh, by yourself uh, or you took this uh, uh data from some database or something like this 
uh, we calculated it by, by ourselves, but only for seven seventy seventy five thousand. Uh, it's the uh, it's the application of model. It's just prediction for the uh, big data set. Uh, ah, if so we cal calculate for so you you don't you don't need to calculate all all seventy five thousand. You just took some uh, calculated some uh, uh, part of this. Ah uh... uh, no, it's only a prediction. Uh, for this uh, can be a large data set. Uh, we show the applicability of our model on this uh, big data set, but we trained and test on uh, a less smaller data set with 7,000 bi uh, biomolecules. And we, on, the, on them, we calculated uh, the metrics by ourselves. So 7,000 you calculated by using quantum, quantum chemical uh, methods. It's very, very big work. <laughs> very big. Thank you. Uh, Larissa Brzezik, uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Andre, and then also thank you, uh, Max, for wonderful uh, lecture and uh, talk. Uh, my question concerns uh, uh, um, the statement that, and it is clear that uh, um, we are interested in the least number of errors uh, in this uh, machine learning uh, technique. Is it possible to introduce uh, the um, criticality of the mistake of the error? Like, for instance, uh, Marx mentioned in the talk uh, this uh, C1 uh, uh, change to 1C can transfer uh, uh, aspirin uh, or <laughs> uh, whatever uh, to uh, poison. So the question is, is it, is it possible to introduce uh, the concept of criticality of the mistake, um, of the error? Uh, uh, no, but if we uh, apply our models and it uh, gives some uh, misclassified molecule, it will not uh, kill anybody. Uh, but um, if we have this data, uh, data set, and somebody wants to uh, uh, improve GFN one XTB, it uh, he will get eighty percent of really challenging uh, molecules. Uh, but uh, other twenties uh, can be not challenging. But uh, for humanity, it's not uh, dangerous like uh, acid in. Uh, from uh, Mark's lectures. Okay, okay, I got it. Thank you. Thank you. Tatiana, your question, Vasu Putanya. Uh, hello, thank you very much for a nice talk. I have a technical question. And uh, how do you select hyperparameters for a neural network? I mean, is there any pattern between the parameters themselves or it's uh, this determined manually and tested to get the best results? Uh, we uh, uh, picked these hyperparameters uh, for many, many experiments uh, and uh, a lot of uh, architectures were tested and uh, all the hyperparameters uh, so it's just uh, experimental we uh, uh, tested it uh, to, for uh, very much time uh, i see it's a complicated thing okay thank you thank you i got it thank you ship questions please okay thank you so uh, 